In today's program, handmade cheese from goat and cow milk, how Ukraine is adopting the European model of farming, is it possible to trade life in the capital for a goat herd in an outback without regrets? Master of Crafts visits one of new centers of Ukrainian cheese making. Today, agricultural Ukraine is a country of large agro-industrial holdings. As a result of mass production of milk and dairy products, very few small farm enterprises can find a way into the market. The only way is to offer something that almost no one else in Ukraine does. For example, peace products from goat milk, handmade cheeses by unique recipe. To occupy this niche, one has to be an experienced farmer, a competent economist and a marketer. Can a typical villager handle so many tasks? The farther from Kyiv, the poorer the aid, the closer the real agricultural Ukraine. 120 kilometers from the capital, on the edge of the Kyiv region, there is a farm that is easy to spot from the side of the road. And yet, a couple of times a week, there are excursions from Kyiv and neighboring cities. What can the local host interest urban residents with? We have a goat farm with a small cheese dairy, which processes the goat milk into cheeses. We also process cow milk. Small farms usually sell their milk to large producers. Taras Lozhenko is one of a handful of farmers in Ukraine who breeds goats and has built a full cycle of production, from animal feed to cheese and vacuum packing. What is the secret of this small but self-sufficient farm? Next, what can make one trade city life for life in a village and how to create a farm from scratch? The Sarabia Square in Kyiv. The family of Taras Lozhenko lived in this over-urban capital district for several generations. My parents and grandparents are all Kyiv people. About 15 years ago, my dad tried to convince his friend that agriculture could be profitable and decided to prove it. On this farm, this is the first farm we had. There were meatballs. The first few years, Taras did not think that this can be a serious long-term occupation. So instead of an agricultural college, he graduated from the Academy of Arts. He is an artist. At the end of 2010, Taras's father decided that it was better to make milk instead of meat. It's all thanks to the wisdom of my father who brought me here. A year before I started doing this, I'd have laughed at one who'd said he was going to be making cheese. I just wanted to help my father, and he got me hooked on this. Today there are approximately 350 goats at this farm. With such a livestock, it is literally necessary to make cheese, otherwise too much milk will be wasted. The demand for it is the highest in winter, but the biggest milk yields are in spring and summer. But for Taras, the creation of cheeses is not just a way to preserve milk. For example, I feel like a grandmother when I see people eating cheese and enjoying it. Like a grandmother that feeds her grandchildren. Eat more children, it's the right kind of cheese. My whole family eats this cheese and all of our friends know about it. Thus, the native Kyiv residents started cooking not only goat cheese but also cow cheese. Taras buys cow milk from his sister. He admits that farming as a business is not the most profitable one. He estimates that creation of such an economy from scratch could require from two to three hundred thousand euros over the course of four years and it will take even longer for stable profits to come. But is there anything that can compare with the pleasure of treating your friends with your own cheese? Next, all the subtleties of the cheese making process and the accident that helped create one of the most delicious Ukrainian cheeses. The Ukrainian market is oversaturated with cheese from cow milk. Although many packages hide entirely factory-made cheese products, as a rule, they do not have a pronounced taste and Ukrainian consumers do not recognize cheeses with mold at all. It is not difficult to make cheese for supermarket shelves. It is much harder to get to those shelves when you only have a small farm. Taras realized that in order to reach the consumer, he must produce a unique, non-mass product and not compete with large factories. So he took a risky decision to cook cheese of great aging. Because it takes 12 months to get ready, 14 months if something is wrong with the milk. If the milk is dirty or the animal is sick, the cheese will not get ready at all. Therefore, our risks are to find that something went wrong a year after the fact. 
Tavros spent several years on experiments with cheese. He visited 11 of the same small family farms in Europe, invited German, French and Dutch experts. They willingly shared their experience with the Ukrainian farmer. The European market is already so rich in also cheeses. Tavros's main principle is to create a solely Ukrainian product using the milk of goats of local breeds and with the help of his own specialists. It was not so easy to find cheesemakers, but some of them found the farm themselves. Like microbiologist Andre Bili, for example, he is another fugitive from the metropolis. My wife and I came here on an excursion from Kyiv and we liked it so much that we came back to the city just to pack our belongings. Trading a pharmaceutical company in the capital for a cheese factory on the edge of the Kyiv region was much easier than it sounds, according to Andre. His wife got a job at the same farm as a guide, and now they both tell visitors how handmade author's cheeses are born. How it is done the first contribution to the future cheese is quality food. Taras grows alpha alpha on his own, and this is the only way to make sure that the animals will not ingest harmful additives. These goats are of Ukrainian breed, but for best milking, they are crossed with German goats. The milk is pasteurized and a ferment is added to it. That is, we kill certain bacteria and then add virtually exactly the same ones, because the leaven that we add comes from raw milk, the strains are isolated and tasted. We can add salt to young cheeses and we add aphylact to long ripening cheeses. Aphylact is an extract from eggs that prevents one of the cheese defects. Such an additive prevents the development of bacteria capable of spoiling the cheese when exposed to more than 10 months. Andre says that large industries often use harmful nitrates to cut costs, but that is not the case on this farm. Next on the list of mandatory additives are the mineral calcium and rennet enzyme. This is exactly the same enzyme as in the stomachs of young calves. When they drink milk, it concludes and digests into clot. We do the same in our cold room, add an enzyme. It binds the protein molecules through this calcium and puts them to one another, which makes the milk turn into a kind of pudding. Milk clot is cut into many small pieces, which is the way to get cheese grain. This is a key intermediate product that requires the cheesemaker to apply all of their skills and experience. Andre says that his teacher allowed him to work with cheese grain only a year after he started training. That is because this work is entirely manual. We have a man who makes cheese and everything depends on this person. Whether he came in a good or bad mood and consequently whether he will invest in it, he gets this grain, kneads and tastes it and then determines what to do with it. When the cheesemaker feels that the grain is ready, it is then separated from the whey and pressed. The future taste directly depends on the shape and size of the cheese head. Then it is left to ripen. A Dutch specialist advised Ukrainian cheesemakers to look after this bring in a certain way and not change it for many years to get the most rich taste, and that is just one of the production secrets. At a usual factory, the ripened cheese heads would have been wrapped in polyethylene, but that way the cheese cannot breathe properly. We use a special cheese coating which we buy in Holland. The downside is that it is expensive, but its advantage is its elasticity. That is, it changes shape together with the cheese and at the same time lets the cheese breathe. Six users for each head, every side is covered three times. The process takes around a week and then it is taken to the ripening chamber in the basement, where all the magic happens. The aging of a certain duration at the right temperature and humidity is what makes true cheese out of a wrapped cheese hat. But it can be spoiled even at this stage, if it is taken out too early or too late, or if one of the conditions is not observed. Andre admits that local cheesemakers have numerous unsuccessful experiments on their accounts, but sometimes, just like in creative search, a failure can turn into revelation. 
We tried one of the recipes in a month, two months, three months, and then just postponed it because it was an unsuccessful one. A year and a half later, we started cleaning the basement where the cheese was stored, and we found this cheese, which was laying in the corner. It turned into small pebbles. We could not just throw it out and decided to give it a try, and it turned out that it was amazing at that stage. The cheesemakers found their original recipe with some effort and today they proudly present their legendary cheese that ripens for 18 months. Its rich but smooth taste cannot be confused with anything and it is also crunchy because of calcium clots. Thus, a unique product was born on a family farm which is difficult to produce, takes a long time to produce and is produced in small volumes following the European example all the way. In Ukrainian conditions where everyone is accustomed to samely factory cheese, Taras often has to hold an education Program for his customers. When they try our cheese and they like it, they buy it next time and it tastes different. Then they ask, where was the cheese they tried the previous time? But is it bad? We reply, no, it's not, but it was different last time. It was, and there will be none like that anymore. Every time it is a new tasting and every time the taste is different. And that is what is great about it. To help farmers like him to get through to the Ukrainian customer, Taras opened a small cheese museum in Kyiv, where you can see and try the products of small family farms from all over Ukraine. Usually the goal of every business is to expand and sell more and more. Taras is convinced that this principle does not suit his farm. We are looking for a balance here at this stage. We are told all the time that we are still going to expand, but as soon as we grow into a large factory, we are going to lose quality. That is very important to us. But our cheese here is handmade and we can observe the whole process. It was the opportunity to work for the soul that brought these modern people from the city to the farm, and they will not trade it for anything else. Life in Kyiv is a routine. You come to work, work, go home, sleep, and here you can go to work with pleasure. That is, you get up in the morning and realize that you are not going to do something useless, but that you are making a truly great natural product and that you could look honestly in the eyes of your parents, friends and customers and be proud of what you are doing.